Good evening. Thank you all for being here tonight. We're going to go ahead and get started with our service. Uh, we're not going to have a song. We'll just have a prayer in just a moment. But we're in for a treat tonight. Uh, we've got some missionaries uh, from Tanzania uh, that wanted to come and kind of share with us some things, share uh, what, what all work they're doing over there, doing lots of good work. I, I was fortunate to sit down and, and have a meal with them while ago. They seem like uh, wonderful Christian men, and we are honored to have them come speak uh, to us tonight. I'm going to lead us in a prayer, and then I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to uh, Brother Daniel uh, Gaines uh, to kind of get things started. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we uh, just bow before you, humbled and grateful to have another opportunity to, uh, to come before you and, and to think about you and about your word and how you uh, want us to live. Uh, we are honored to have uh, three men come and, and talk to us and share some things uh, about the work that they're doing. And we, we just pray that you will continue to bless them, uh, bless them in the work uh, that they're doing, and bless the souls that they are uh, trying to reach. I just pray you'll bless their families as well. Uh, bless them with safety as they're traveling throughout the United States uh, for a few weeks. And uh, also be with them and keep them safe as they travel back home. Be with those who are sick, Father, as we have many uh, in our number here in Huntington and many elsewhere that are uh, dealing with sickness and even other things, God, dealing with loss and all sorts of challenges that we face and experience. We're thankful that we have a Savior and a high priest who understands our weaknesses and understands the things that we go through. And we're thankful for what he's done for us, the sacrifice that he made for us on the cross, and the hope that we have in that. Bless us throughout the rest of the service and bless us this evening. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good evening. Um, my name is Daniel Gaines. I'm the coordinator of Tanzania Missions. It's a work that you all have been involved in for quite some time. And I've had the pleasure of visiting with you a couple of times in the past. And you've, you've heard me uh, speak, but uh, this will be the first opportunity that these brothers have had to, to be with you. And I think it'll be a treat uh, for both of you. Um, they're visiting here from Tanzania. We have uh, Himidiwe Kamaro and Charles Mwanga. They are the um, local uh, co-directors of the Andrew Connolly School of Preaching, the School of Preaching there in Arusha, Tanzania. It's kind of the, uh, the centerpiece of our work. There's a lot else that's involved as well, as you might know. If you want even more information after this, we've got a display set up in the foyer here. Come back there, take a look at uh, the, the, the pictures, handle the and ask whatever questions you'd like to. Um, but since you've heard me talk about the work before, I'm not going to say a lot to you right now. I'm going to let uh, Charles uh, talk to you. He's going to bring uh, a little bit of a, a Bible lesson and talk a little bit about the, the work as well. Their whole purpose in being here for three or four weeks is they wanted to come and, and say thank you. And so I'm taking them around to some of our best supporters to express their appreciation. They're so grateful for your involvement of what you have meant to them and their work uh, over the years. And now they have the chance to stand here in person and say thank you, and they're very excited about that. And I'm glad that uh, I'm proud for you to meet them as well. I love these men. I respect these men. Uh, they're good, good friends of mine, and I appreciate them so very, very much. So, Charles. Good evening. It is my pleasure to stand before you and uh, beginning by saying thank you. Thank you so much for all that you have been doing. Thank you so much for the contributions and supports that you have given, been giving to the churches. You may think it is just money, but sometimes one, one person someday will be in heaven just because you gave. So thank you. In the book of Philippians, please turn with me with the, together in the book of Philippians. Philippians chapter 1, verse 3. As Paul was remembering the things that he, the brethren and Philippi has done to him, and how he, they have helped him on doing this work, he's sending this thanksgiving as a prayer. 
and uh, we are doing the same thing to you today. Philippians chapter 1, verse 3 through 6. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, making requests for you all with joy. For your fellowship in the gospel for the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. So this is your hope and prayer, that we will continue hand to hand as we are going out and doing what the Lord has commanded. But this evening with these things, I want us to remind, something, remind ourselves some things from the Bible. How many here have we ever studied from the book of Micah? I want us to spend some time in the book of Micah looking on uh, what the Lord is uh, wanting his people to do as we are thinking on how we should go out and bring many people to Christ. I, as, as I was walking or driving out there, I saw that signboard says, we learn from the past or let the past mistakes of you as being a lesson of today then it fit perfect with the, what we are going to say today because we are going to study from the Old Testament. Micah is one of the books that he, the Lord is very sad with his people. And the Lord is very sad with his people even nowadays because Christians have tended to reach in a point whereby we do not, either by not wanting or without even thinking, we do not want to do what the Lord has said. The last words of the Lord as he was living, he's charging anyone who claimed to follow him to go out, to go out there, teach those who are lost, making them disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and continue to teach these people. And he promised to be with those people who will do this work till he come. Matthew 28, verse 18 through 20. But here in the book of Micah, God is having a word with his people. If you read this, this entire book, you will see how much the Lord is very sad with his people. The rich are oppressing the poor. The standard is not there. And he's talking to his nation, his chosen nation. They have turned around and live like the worldly people. The priests, instead of doing what the Lord is saying, they are doing what people are saying. In chapter 2, in chapter 3, everyone is corrupted. Listen to these words which are being spoken in chapter 2 and uh, compare those things with us nowadays. Lord's people, in chapter 2, verse 1, are being mentioned with these words. Woe to those who diverse iniquity and work out evil on their beds. At morning light, they practice it because it is in their power, in the power of their hands. They covet fields and take them by violence, also houses and seize them. So they oppress a man and his house, a man and his inheritance. You were not expecting these things to be done within the chosen, the chosen. And sometimes it is very easy for us as Christians to sit down and think these people were very dumb. How can God's people do this? But we do it in a different fashion, the way we live our lives, the way we conduct ourselves. Are your friends, neighbors, know that you are a Christian? And not a Christian because you come to this building. A Christian because of the way you or I conduct myself. The Lord is having words with his people. And these are very, very sad words. In chapter 6. Micah chapter 6. The Lord is starting saying these words in verse 3. Oh my people, what have I done to you? And how have I word you testify against me? This God who has created the human is regretting and seeing how he has been despised by his people. 
That's why he's asking him, these people, how, how have I become a burden? What much have I asked? Reading from the book of Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 5, verse 4. What more could have, could have been done to my vineyard that I have not done in it? When, why then, when I expect it to bring forth good grapes, did it bring forth vine, wine, wine, will the grapes? God is, is explaining how his people has been. Instead of bearing good fruits, they are bearing wildy. The Lord is calling upon his people in Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 4. And he says, that says the Lord, what injustice, injustice have, have your fathers found in me that they have gone far from me having followed, followed the idols and have become idolaters. When, when we, we read these words, thinking of these people, it is easy for us to think that why did they do that? And in this chapter, the Lord is going to set up a stage by showing how mighty things he, how many mighty things he has done to them. How he has brought them with a mighty hand from Egypt. How he has fed them. And, uh, and uh, I know most of us here like to eat. Forty years free in the wilderness. Neither even their garments wore out. They, he made them drinking from the impossible. From the rock. And he is asking them here, show me one injustice thing that I have done to you. Why then are you not doing what am I requesting? Why then are you not walking according to what I have said? Christians today, remember Jesus as he was entering Jerusalem. He is mourning for Jerusalem. And he's saying, how many times have I tried to gather you as a hen gather his chicks? And you have rejected. We may say, oh, those people in the first century were very crazy. Let, uh, let me bring it today. The charge and the command was for us to go out. Do your neighbors know that you are a Christian? And knowing is not just by seeing you coming here, as I said, the life you are living, are you unjust? Because remember, one of the accusations that the Lord is making to his people is that he, uh, they have not been living accordingly. Instead of thinking and meditating in the law of the Lord day and night when they are in their bed, they are dev devising how can we do wicked things? Uh, which one should we fashion tomorrow? And it is so sad, so sad because he, even us who are claiming to be Christians today can be found in that. May it not be true when the Lord comes. Because remember, when Jesus comes back, he's not going to deal with anyone outside. He's coming to the church. And Paul is saying, if the judgment will begin in his household, how, what will be the end of those who did not believe. And how can they believe if you have not gone out? Romans chapter 10. How can they believe if they have not heard about the power of salvation that is in the book that we believe, that is in the God that we believe? Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Do we really believe the Bible? I want you to take this moment to think of a friend, a very close friend who is not a Christian. Imagine if that person will be saved. Whom do you think will save that person? It is you. You have to open your mouth. It is us all going out and teaching people and telling them about God. So wh what is the Lord required? Oh, what is he wanting after showing that he has been despised by his people? 
he says this. He says this in verse, verse 7. Verse 8, excuse me. Micah chapter 6, verse 8. He has shown uh, you, O oh men, what is good and what does the Lord require of you. The Lord requires several things out of us. The first one in this verse is for us to do justly. How is your life? How is my life? Matthew chapter 5, verse 16, the Bible says, let your light shine before men. And once this light, I'm not talking about Christians walking around with the a big flashlight. This is not what I'm talking about. The type of life we are living. Can people see Jesus in our daily lives so that they can glorify our Father who is in heaven? If we have not been doing so, this, this evening the Lord is calling us. Because we cannot go out and teach and preach, bring the lost to Christ, if we ask ourselves do not live according to the standard. Remember, Jesus had a fight, a lot of talks with these uh, Sadducees, Pharisees, and scribes. And one of the problems is that they are saying one thing and they are doing the other thing. They really know the law. And, and this is true. Most of the members in Church of Christ knows the Bible. Do we live it? See ye then how you walk. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 17. The Bible uses the old word there, walk circumspectively. Do we watch how we conduct ourselves? Because somebody is watching. How many people have we hindered from hearing? Because if we are not living right, whether we go out and tell them about this good news, they'll be like, you are not even saved. How do you know it is good? So it is upon us this evening to decide that, yes, we are going out to teach people. We are going out to preach to people. We are going out to save people, but it begins. You had a campaign back then. Changes begin with you. The, the, I'm, I'm not wanting to become a politician here, but I remember that phrase from the past. You had it here. The changes begins with us. So the Lord is requiring us first to live justly. To be just in your life. Whatever you want others to do to you, do the same thing to them. We have that golden rule. Do we apply it? But the second thing the Lord is requiring is to love mercy. In this verse 8, uh, Micah chapter 6, verse 8. Love mercy. You know, if you, if you don't love to be compassion, don't think of heaven. Don't think of heaven. Because Jesus loved us so much. That's why he came to seek, not only to save, to seek first and save that which was lost. Luke 19.10. He failed. That's why he saw Jerusalem and he mourned for it. He is seeing Christians who are not living right. And he's mourning for that. So he wants us now today to love, to have compassion to other people. That they don't have Christ. And they will never, your neighbor, your friends, those people outside there, we are saying, yeah, those are the lost. Uh, those are the bad people. They can't change if we do not show that mercy and go out. The Israelites have lost it. Remember, these are the people who are coming from the same father. But the rich are even grabbing lands from their own relatives. They kick the poor out. The, the priests have lost what they were supposed to do, but rather since this man will pay them this much, uh, they will do whatever the guy says. The Lord is not happy with his people, and he is going to send them to captivity for 70 years. But in chapter 4, he is giving them hope, showing that he is a merciful God. 
And in Micah chapter 4, he's telling them that I will bring the Redeemer. The Messiah will come. And yes, it was a prophetic word about Jesus coming uh, from Bethlehem. But uh, after 70 years, the remnant shall return to the land. Do we think of these lost people this much? How much time have you spent on at least showing somebody this way? This way of Jesus. Remember, Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. John 14. How, how, how many times have I shown these people? We thank you so much with the support that you are giving us so that once we are there, we can go to the village, to the rural areas, and share the gospel to the people. That is very good. But Paul is saying, let it not be that I preach to all the people. And what is the end of that? I myself should not be, he used the word anathema, should not be rejected, should not be denied. So yes, we, we thank you for supporting the work. We thank you for helping us go to the places where we cannot go and reach those who are lost. But please, let it begin here also. Because if we will be feeling a sack, I know you are, most of you here know some farming things. You have those, those bags, the sacks. A, a sack with full of holes, when, when you pour water, water goes through. So let it not be that we are saving Africa, we are losing America. Because we want everyone to go to heaven. Do it here, and please, if possible, come, we do together there. Because we are building one house, and we want to see each other in heaven. May the Lord help these people, uh, uh, we all, that we should change and be compassionate with everyone. As you are walking in the street, you pass a person whom you do not know or you know. And the culture here is a problem. Because here people have to know each other, to talk to each other. Where we came from, uh, you talk to anybody. Say, hey, how are you? And then you can start something. But use the way you are doing things here. If they say no, you have done your part. But if you have not said, one day they will tell the Lord, I knew him or I knew her, and he didn't mention this to me. The third thing that the Lord is wanting, yes, we may have success in life, Yes, we may, be, we may be able to bring people to God, but he is wanting the third thing here, for us to walk humbly with our God. He says this at the end of verse 8, and to walk humbly with your God. These are the three things that the Lord wants. And since he is the Lord, he is the one making rules. Remember John 14, 15. If we claim to love him, we should keep his commandments. So sad Christians nowadays think that they can give opinions. They can give, because we went to school, I have this degree on Bible, or that degree on uh, theology. I think I can have an opinion instead of following the law. The law says, go. This is, was not a, 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 an opinion from the Lord. The Lord has commanded us all to go out. How many times have we gone? And if we have not gone, we have failed to walk humbly. A humble person is the one who accepts and do without questioning. How many times have we done that? How many times have we uh, do what he says we should do and wait for the reward? Paul is saying he has fought the good fight. And he has not seen the, the, the result, but he knows that the Lord who is righteous, he will reward him with the crown. How many times have we just do the Lord, what the Bible says? I will do what the Bible says, and not my opinion. Say, ah, well, we are paying the preacher. We will send him to go and do this. The Bible didn't say that. The Bible didn't say that send the, pay the preacher to go and evangelize. 
Yes, we do that, but we, it is my duty. I was talking to his son and I said Christianity is like eating. We have a duty to feed ourselves every day. We have a duty to tell and live that life every day. And one of that is accepting. So if we call Jesus our Lord, he complained in, verse, in chapter 15 of the book of Matthew that these people are calling me, in chapter 7, calling me Lord, Lord, but they do not know, do what I'm saying. And most of the time we, when we read these verses from verse uh, 20 and 21, we are saying oh, these are the denomination people. They are calling him Lord. They are calling him Lord and they are doing all these things. Most of the time we refer to them and we fail to remember that it is anyone who is not doing it accordingly. The Lord will say, depart from me, you evildoers. I never knew you. So may it not be said to us here by the Lord on the last day. Because from today we are going to change. And from today we are going to be humble. We are going to be merciful. We are going to live justly. So that when people see us, they see Jesus in us. They see Christianity. We can preach even without opening our mouth by the way we conduct ourselves in their midst, by the way we conduct ourselves wherever we are. We thank you so much. And we are continuing to say, to, to say thank you for the church here for supporting many, many people for many, many years. Many people will be in heaven because the entire church, the church in general, is doing a great job. But this evening, I'm talking to individuals. What have you done? What will you show the Lord one day? That, Lord, I've done this. Remember a king like Ezekiah who was sick and he reminded the Lord of what he has done. What will I, what will you show the Lord? May these few words be a catalyst of me and you being servants, being Christians whom the Lord requires. Thank you. Thank you, Charles, for a nice word tonight. My name is Ahimidiwe. It's Swahili name. It's a bit quite long, but uh, they call me Himi, like Himinji, for those who knows. Uh, I am married with four kids. Uh, as you know, Africans, there is a polygamy. Uh, I am married to one wife. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, really, I am very impressed for this congregation. Uh, I was uh, always, you are always in my prayer because of things that, uh, how you have taken uh, a mission work as a serious job. Really, there's a day we went for a mission work in the village. And uh, we found out they are Christian, very good Christian, that they are worshiping every Sunday. But they were under a big tree, mango tree. I think I went with Daniel and the other brothers. And everyone was surprised. We went there and we, they, were, they, they didn't have chairs. They didn't have anywhere good to, see, to sit. They were sitting in the rocks. But they were still listening to their preacher. And we talk with the brother and say, what are we going to do? What are we going to do about this? 
because on the time when it is raining, no one is worshiping. They may be worshiping in, the, in, the, in their homes, but it is far away from each other. But uh, Daniel came back and he talked with very congregation here. And you can't believe those people, they are shouting their prayers to God for getting a nice place to worship through you guys. And guess what? I was talking to Daniel today. I think he, maybe himself, he never know. Because of that work, five more congregations have been resulted through the love that you shown to us, to shown to those people. They are there worshiping every Sunday and do, doing all God's, uh, what has been commanded by God because they saw the examples. What you are doing today, it is remarkable. It is something that go, people will remember and God will not down because of your love. Really, we have come here to tell you that we appreciate so much. We have nothing there, but we, we have spirit to tell the world how you love God. Through this, even us ourselves, we are learning. We are growing through you, and we appreciate the all effort that you are doing to the world. Please continue to pray for us as we go. There it's hard. It's not easy like here. Not always you'll have a car. Not always you'll, sometimes you go to the place that even finding food, it's hard. You can't get nice food, but we still have the same uh, command from God as he said, we have to go. There's no any choice. We have been sent by God and we have to go regardless of our circumstances. Thank you guys and may God bless you. Remember us in your prayer. Remember the church in your prayer there and we will be always remembering you in our prayers. May God bless you. Thank you, brothers. Um, it's such a, a joy to work with men like this. Uh, they make what I do possible, and uh, uh, again, love and appreciate them so much. I think we have a few minutes left in what the time that's allotted to us. Do you have any questions that you would like to uh, address to Charles or him anyway, or myself that we might be able to handle? Yes, sir. Uh, that sounds more like Nigeria to me. In, in Tanzania, they've enjoyed uh, tremendous religious freedom. We've been able to, uh, by the grace of God, operate fairly uh, unencumbered by the government or um, religious persecution there. Yeah. But that's the real thing, though, in some of your neighboring countries. In Nigeria, then, is that not right? I think that may happen in Nigeria, yeah. That there are parts of the world where it's not safe to, to be a Christian. Other questions?
Okay. Uh, well, just to uh, quickly remind you about what uh, Tanzania Missions uh, is the, the different aspects of what's going on, there are, uh, as I say it, four main categories of, of the work that are part of Tanzania Missions. One category is preacher training, which is what uh, one area these men are directly involved in. As the directors of the Andrew Connolly School of Preaching, we have uh, students that come to us from all over Tanzania, all over East Africa. We've had students from uh, a lot of students from Kenya, but students also as far away as uh, South Sudan, Ethiopia, uh, Uganda, the Democratic Republic of the Congo. We even had one student from Nigeria uh, years years ago. And so it's it's a, a mission point that is impacting a wide part of uh, Africa, not only just. Tanzania. And matter of fact, now there are some several other schools of preaching that have uh, opened up in other parts of East Africa, and it's our graduates that are operating at several of those schools. And so we're excited about that, you know, sphere of influence and seeing the good that is is being perpetuated through the guys that they train, the guys that they train, the guys that they train. Um, also, we're concerned, of course, about uh, evangelism. That's ultimately what it's all about. It, our task is, in to, is to increase the population of heaven. That's what we want to do. Uh, that's really, when you get down to the end of life, uh, ultimately that's the only thing we can do that will have meant anything long, long after we're gone. Did we increase heaven's population? Um, so evangelism is so easy in Tanzania. There, there's the only limit to the number of Bible studies you can have there is the amount of time you have to dedicate to studying the Bible with people. There are always people that are ready and willing to uh, to study with you. Um, and so with that in mind, I encourage you, you know, maybe get a, a group together and come on a campaign. Uh, we'd love to have you. It'd be a, a great way for you to, to spend a couple of weeks. Uh, it would be very faith affirming and energizing for you, I'm confident. So let me just put that bug in your ear. Uh, not a literal bug, of course, that would be gross. But uh, just a thought is, is what I mean. Um, and then the third thing we're concerned about is with uh, benevolence. We look for ways to help the very impoverished people. We can't solve the problem of poverty, but we do have the opportunity to uh, help provide sometimes uh, food, clothing, shelter, uh, educational opportunities, medical care sometimes to, uh, to some very worthy and, and needy individuals. And then the fourth uh, column is in edification of the, the church. We want to equip churches, help them uh, not only to just baptize people, but help as they continue to grow and develop depth in congregations. We're finally getting to the point now that we're getting some second generation Christians and I think that's very exciting because that's a, a sign of a sign of, of longevity and permanence and that you have these families that are developing and so you have Christians, you know, children that have grown up in a Christian family. What a, a blessing that we might take for granted here that uh, so many of us perhaps had the opportunity to grow up in Christian families. Many did not, of course, but for those uh, of you that did, what a tremendous blessing that is. Um, and so now there are children that are growing up in Christian families and being baptized uh, by their fathers. That's a very special, special thing. And so the, that depth is something we're we're concerned about a lot of things that we do to try to equip uh, the churches. You know, we have numerous seminars that we're doing all the time. Uh, we go around part of our our calendar each year is is traveling to as many different congregations as we can in order to find out what ways we can help them to see what they've done with help that we've uh, provided in the past um, and to. Equip and train. That's, that's what that is, is ultimately about, and you all have been very active as a part of that as well. Um, and also with that, we have started the uh, Cy Stafford uh, School of Leadership, which is a school that is uh, primarily dedicated to the development of Christian leadership, i.e. looking towards having elders. Uh, having uh, elders in uh, congregations in Tanzania has been a tremendous challenge 
while we have uh, dozens and dozens of, country, uh, of congregations across the, the country, there are probably only about four or so that have elders that I'm familiar with, not a tremendous amount. Um, and, and so that's something that we want more of, and one way we're trying to help with that is to provide some specific leadership training uh, within the church. And so those are just some broad strokes as to things that are, are taking place. Thank you so much for allowing us to come back and, and be with you. Thank you for your help, and thank you especially for your prayers. I want to ask you to continue praying for this work, the other works that you support, uh, other uh, mission works that you hear about. Be praying for areas of the world that you think ought to, ought to have mission work taking place. Pray that God will send missionaries there, but be people that are laboring in your prayers on a regular basis uh, for mission work and, and being mission-minded people. Thank you again so much. Let's pray. Father God, we love you and thank you, Father, for loving us. Father, we humble ourselves as we come before you. We pray that you've been glorified and honored in this. Father, we thank you so much for the brethren that have come tonight, Father. Um, Father, we just pray for their safety as they travel around and, and spread the, uh, the news of what they're doing. Father, we pray that you will bless them with that. We pray that you will bless them with good health, Father, as they glorify and honor you. Father, as they go back, we pray for the work in Tanzania. Father, we pray for our brothers and sisters there in that country. Father, we lift them up to you. We pray, Father, that you will watch over them, encourage them, and strengthen them. Father, that they will grow closer to you, Father, that we might be able to spend eternity one day with our brothers and sisters from there. Father, we pray for these good brothers that are uh, preaching and teaching. Father, we pray your blessings on them and their families. Father, as they're away from them, Father, we pray that you will watch over them, encourage them, and strengthen them. And Father, we just thank you for their coming tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You're dismissed.